is it? I don't know, cause I. You Nigga, could tell me. I'm, can I, I ask like, you a question? Is he bipolar or not? Did he tell you that? He did. He told the world that. So if you checked off the boxes of bipolar, is he acting that? Yeah. So then leave it at that. But you look. Worry about his health if you care about him at all. What's going on? What's good, you man? good? Very. Hi. Nice to meet you. This, Craig. Is, this is Wifey for Lifey. Raquel, nice Pope to meet you. You see yeah. how she walked okay. in off okay. top? Yeah, straight with the dance. All right. Clean. So she already knows. Okay, okay, say no more. All right, listen, Dave, when it comes to hustling, entrepreneurship, trailblazing, you're like the apex. A lot of people look at you. You started a lot of trends, we've got to be honest. Yeah, you're being honest. I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you in Kick Game, man. Honestly, Thank I feel you. like if you're a fan of hip hop, and I'm a massive fan of hip hop, you have to get your flowers, you have to get your respect. People know what you've done. Where do you want to go? This is your store today, man. Wherever the fresh takes me. For me, when yeah. it comes to sneakers, today, mm. I love to wear the sneakers that I used to hustle in when they, when they first came out. I mean, of course it's white Nike Airs, but I got those on right here. Got Supreme joints on but right now. It's hard for me never not. I got another. I just need another, I'm a, I need another pair of these. Can't get too many pair of white Nike Airs, so I, I got Damn, this is gonna sound crazy. How many pairs do you think of Air Forces you've probably bought in your life? Bought? Yeah. I, I couldn't even start to imagine. I, you know, I stopped counting my sneakers when I stopped counting my money. Jesus Christ. Ooh. Jesus. The bars <laughs> there. You're just dropping bars on us like that. Yeah, I need these. Are you into the 11s? Yes, I'm very. So what would you say is like one of your all-time great shoes, man? What's one of your all-time great sneakers? White Nike Airs. That's number one? Number one, top tens, um, big Nikes, Dunks, Jordans. Yeah. Shell Tour Adidas. Okay. Forums, suede pumas. Okay. Shit like Some that. Classics in there. Certain Deodoras. You know, New Balance. I feel like you was one of the main people that started the like one and done thing. Yeah. It's just Crazy. I don't like my sneakers dirty. So you just don't wear them more than once? When I was younger I didn't. Cause I was going outside every day. Yeah. So I just didn't see the purpose of it. Do you remember when you did the the MTV Crips here in London? Yeah, do you? Do you, do you remember that? Hell yeah, why wouldn't I? I wasn't drunk that drunk. <laughs> you say you twist right now. This looks like I'm never twist. Yo, this looks like uh, I'm a rock star, bro. I'm just rocking out. I like So these, these look like you only have big sizes. Rock, you like these? I like those. Of, of, of this style, which one you think would color? Cause I got this color and I got that. Yeah. Which one? Mm -hmm. This is the blue. That. Yeah, this will be dope. All the red shits, oh shit. I'm gonna talk about it. <laughs> He's just carrying them. Hey Dame, I gotta ask you, what brings you to London, man? Um, what, what, what's the purpose of the trip? Talk to me. Nikki Slime, formerly. Shout out Nikki. Nikki Slim Ting, that was his old name. Yeah. I call him Nikki Slime. Why'd you call him Nikki Slime? It just sounds cooler. But uh, then calling him Slim Ting, I don't like that. <laughs> but, you know, he had hollered at me. Yeah. And I found a common ground with him and a respect for his ability to make films independently. Okay, let's start. And we had been talking through the years and he was like, yo, I need to bring you out here. I was like, yeah, let me see you do it. And he did it. But you know, he's an independent, I'm an independent. So both of us know not to waste time because time is, is money. So while I was out here, him and Femi, he brought me around every person uh, from our culture that are really doing things yeah. that don't have to ask, that are like-minded and can just do. So like Getz, which we saw you with. Getz, super independent, you gotta build it, you got all of them. Yeah. And also even executives, you brought me around some strong women. Mm. I saw yeah. that you had a dinner. We had the intention to combine, to, not, to no longer make it a British American thing, make it a culture thing. Okay. A pond doesn't like mean that. you different. And I think we're programmed. I would get you, 
You want to get these for Ava or for you, Rocky? We got some baby shoes, find some yeah, baby yeah, shoes. Yeah, we got some baby joints. And we want that. these. Right? The high top ones? Yeah, I'm, I think I might be over budget, but it don't matter. No, I'm never no, over budget. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> What we got now? You got towards the Yeezys. I should never have to buy Yeezys ever. Do you get sent Yeezys? What you think? I don't know. I don't know. What would be the respectful thing? For him to send you Yeezys. And then he does the right thing. Let's talk about Ye, man. I know you probably answered a lot of questions about Ye since you've been here, Dave, but that's your guy. Yeah, what about him? I watched his drink champs. Mm. And in the drink champs, he was asked by Nori, who you know very well as well. Yep. I signed Nori. And he was like, Jay or Dame? And then he said you straight away. Who and was he like, asking, who's the best rapper or who's the best CEO? He just said, Jay or Dame. Oh. And then he said Dame. And he said, because he put me on and all of these different he things. He also said he's the original black hipster. He did say that. He did. Do you agree with that? He said the truth. What's a, what's a hipster in your definition? Me. <laughs> I'm hip. <laughs> this guy is the him. rock star. He's the original. Talk to me about Ye though, man. How do you feel about Ye right now? He's my brother. How often do you guys speak? Like, you're not constantly in contact? Or? Not constantly. Yeah. When he needs me. And when I'm worried about him. How do you feel about him right now? He cool? Are you worried about him or is he? What do you think I'm worried about him? Is he? I don't know, because I... Nigga, you could tell me. I'm, can I, I ask like, you a question? Is he bipolar or not? Did he tell you that? He did. He told so, the world that. So if you checked off the boxes of bipolar, is he acting that? Yeah. So then leave it at that. But you didn't look. Worry about his health if you care about him at all. But you don't think he's doing bits that like he's making sense to it? I, I'm just saying that regardless to what, yeah. regardless to what he's saying, it's the way he's saying it. Yeah. So I don't care what he's saying. I want it's about him to, how he's going about it. I want him to live. Yeah, okay. Y'all worried about the wrong shit. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. If you know a man has a problem and you know he might be checking the boxes off for the mm. symptoms of that problem, why do you judge him as if he doesn't have a problem? So can, it's not logical. Why you put a camera on him instead of sending a prescription or a doctor or some therapist? So can you get through to him? Who can, who can get through to him and... and... Uh, you know, we don't speak on the way we communicate and when we communicate, but just know I'm always there. And sometimes when he's loud and he stops being loud, it could be because somebody has actually spoke to him. But the person that usually speaks to him isn't there when he's doing well, so they don't get the picture. Because okay. they don't care. Yeah. The ones that care don't want the pictures. They just want to help. Interesting. Interesting. So do you feel like some people are not, they're overlooking that and they should really be taking that into account, especially the people that know him and are around him? I just want to make sure you don't do what other people do. Okay. Because you're in front of a camera. Yeah. Let's have some compassion for a man that may be not so well at that moment. Okay. If he told you transparently he has a problem, respect it. Mm. So my thing is, I'm a diabetic. If you see me not taking my insulin and drinking Kool-Aid and sugary drinks, yeah. you should be concerned. And if you don't help, you don't care. Yeah? He, we're he, fans. He, we love Ye. So keep He's loving. done so much for the culture, for the music. Don't love him. But care. we're concerned. Don't, then how do, you, how do you show your concern? If you don't know him, it's hard. Like, I don't know him. I'm just speaking as a perspective of a fan. So no, no. Fan of his you art and you his start culture. talking about the ways to help him. Instead okay. of asking about what's wrong with him, give him the cure. Okay. We all know the problem. But then that's what we need you to do, because you know it. I, I want you to give that gem to the people. And I that. just did it. OK, I hear it, I hear it. All right, let's talk about entrepreneurship, man. Because you're about. a big businessman. You told, you said you work with people here. I'm not a big businessman anymore. I'm an artist. Businessmen do anything for money. OK. I do anything for love and art. Two different things. Okay, do you feel like there was a time where you was more maybe a businessman than an there artist? There was a time I did anything for money. What changed? When did it change for you? When was the moment you was like, okay, it's not about that? I didn't enjoy it. I didn't like the way it made other people feel. I didn't like the things it made people do. Yep. And, you know, I feel better when I'm being creative and I'm doing things for love. Love is God-made. Money is man-made. I don't give a fuck about what no man makes. Fact. I care about what God makes. Wisdom. Logic. Logic as well. Better wisdom. Yeah.
Sprinkle them. Sprinkle them. Oh, sprinkle them. Yeah, sprinkle them. Sprinkle them. Uh, okay. Sprinkle them. Sprinkle them. So, my name is Craig Mitch, but my second name isn't really Mitch. Not a lot of people know that, but I took Mitch from Paid in Full, which is one of my favorite films ever. I loaned it to you. <laughs> okay, you, you borrowed me the name then. Fine. You borrowed me the name. Do you feel like that film gets its props? Yeah. Do you feel like in terms of how iconic it is? Hell yeah. How is it received in America? Like, where did, how do they look at it in America? Is it like, it's like, you know, ridiculous. It's a culture. Like, you yeah. know, we got the BBS boys and the car culture, the fashion culture, the music culture, the hustle culture. Shit is real. I'm about to do Payton in Full Part 2. Sweat. Yeah. Who's gonna be in it? Can you give that away? Or is there any characters maybe? Whoever's gonna be in it, you probably wouldn't know him. So it won't be like Makai Fire for or anyone like that? He's 50 years old, bro. What's he yeah, gonna he play? Could, I don't know, he could be like a granddad or, or something. You wanna get paid in full grand, grandpa grand? No, but he could be a, in the background, in the off license or something. I don't know, like. That wouldn't be cool. Nah? Nah, okay. We're gonna, we're gonna keep it the same age. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wait, gonna... right, let's talk about your cameo edit though. It was too funny. It was. When you pulled off in the car and you're just like, yeah. why do you do more acting like that? What do you mean? I did a lot of acting. No, but back then, how come she wasn't doing a lot more acting back then? I don't know. Off the back of that, because that was hilarious. I don't know, the CEO of Rockefeller, you know, I had Jay-Z, uh, Kanye, uh, you know, I was doing a lot of okay. shit, you all know, right, I'm sorry. All right, all right. I know I'm superhuman, but goddamn, it's like, there's only one of me, bro. Yeah, all right, cool. I didn't, I didn't want to go into too much Rockefeller question, because everyone knows what you've done, but I, I want to ask you, and this might be difficult, but like, what's your top three Rockefeller albums ever? Um, you don't have to even do it in order, but just I'll tell three. you, Kanye's first album, The Blueprint and Reasonable Doubt. <sighs> Strong. I mean, I put them out. It's just such a flex. Oh, also State Property. That's a hard album as well. With the it's movie. such a flex. Are you, do you see Nas now? Are you cool with him or is it, what is I've always it? been cool with Nas. Yeah. What are you talking about? Even back then there was no... Yeah. Because I know you didn't like Steve Stout at one point and then there was that kind of whole... You know, I smack Steve Stout, but, you know, here's what it is. Who else did you smack? Harvey Weinstein, was that true? What Cameron said? I had smacked somebody, it wasn't. But, you know. Did the Cameron say that, though? He did say it. <laughs> he just saw me, I had to put hands on a couple of people out there, but he saw it, you know, so. I had a lot of issues with the Weinstein, so I used to put pressure on him. Yeah. But um, nobody else would, and everyone so else was it. scared, but I don't know why. What's your thoughts on Choke No Joke? putting out like all this footage now? Like, is that something he came to you about or does he just put it out? No, he's disrespectful, but I don't think about him. I'll get to him later. Jesus Christ. I paid him for, to, to, to do that footage. He bootlegged it and he knows. Serious? Yeah, it's all good. Damn. If it, you know, it's not enough money for me to sweat and I got other shit to do. I got bigger fish to fry, yeah. but when I get, you know, if I, if I sport, maybe I'll deal with it. Let me take you over to this wall quickly. <laughs> Might, oh, <laughs> I want some Virgils and shit. That had like the force field on it, not those. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you ever get these? Nah. The Nike Yeezys? Uh -uh. Were you just not interested in them or? Yeah. It wasn't for you? No, I wonder they weren't for me. I, I just, I just never got around to it. Never got around to it? I was doing other shit. I was, I was like, you know like how Steve Jobs went on a mission and you know, I just wanted to start art galleries and shit. You know what those are? No. He's fucking, he, this dude, Nigo, he, he gave me the first pair of those in Japan. But I was like, them shits is fake Nike Airs. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I never won. You got the college dropout vases and that's what you said? I got a bunch of them shits. He gave them shits. This thing used to come to Rockwear and be like, Nico's coming to visit. And I be, right, let him up. He'd just be in my showrooms and shit and leave. I be, right, yo, I thought he was coming to visit. He'd just look at my shit and just make it his way. There's people that don't kill for them now. You was just like, yo, like, just I know. throw them away and give them away. Bro, I just, I, I've lost so many fucking sneakers, like fucking warehouses full of them, but they're like my closets, but I just forget where they at. Yeah. You know, it's been a long time and I'm high. This first of like, all, I was the first dude with my own sneaker. I had the CEOs, I had the Barclays, like, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah, I seen a picture of those. See? I've seen a picture of those. You already Crazy. know. See, if you know, you know, you know. I've seen a picture of those. And you got a CEO of clothing like now? Right now, at Made by Dame Dash. See when you did the Breakfast Club, right? And there was that massive, massive viral moment. It had everyone speaking. Even here in the UK, everyone was speaking about it where it was like a boss versus a worker. And you've always been like adamant and stern about that, right? Mm. 
What is it about that that makes you so passionate, you know, that people just shouldn't be workers? Just, just to break it down. Well, for first, the, for first, the first off, an argument between a general and a soldier is a no-go off top. You understand what I mean? Yeah. You're working for somebody, you're talking with somebody you don't, it's a different conversation. Mm. But at the end of the day, the only way to be the boss is to be the boss. The only way not to be told what to do is to tell people what to do, you gotta own it. The only way to make the laws is to be the landlord. Only way to pass something to your children is to have something tangible that you own to pass to them. Yeah. I mean, it's logical. I don't understand why anybody thinks anything different. That's what, that's what I wanted to ask you. Why do you think people were so impressed about it? Like some people were so impressed about it. Because they felt guilty. So why Regardless to what, whatever I said was the whole purpose was to evolve and I did that. Okay. Why, do, why do you think so many people have struggle to be bosses in that sense? Why have we got like 95% workers and only 5% bosses? Because they're taught not to. Because education, they take kids from their parents, especially in, in London, you know, like, first of all, only 2% of the headmasters out here yeah. are black. Okay, I'm with you. And there's more black people than that. That's crazy. And I don't even know that, and I live here. How do you know that? Who told you that? You a principal. Research? I'd oh, rather headmaster. Headmaster flew in from Scotland to tell me I'm part of something called the OSD in America, which is 200 principals that are from economically compromised places. And, you know, we talk about curriculum and I teach the principals how to be entrepreneurs so they could teach how to be entrepreneurs, how to dream, how not to be scared, you know, the whole thing. One of the women there from, that are in the OSD just quit being a principal. She know why she said? What? She said, because they gave her a list out here yeah. of the jobs they wanted y'all to have. And they said, only teach him about these jobs. I'm mad. Yeah, you should be mad. I'm mad. So, I'm mad. fuck being mad, let's change it. So I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna teach these principals or headmasters how to teach these kids how to dream and do what they wanna do as opposed to what y'all want them to do. Jesus. So when did this become like the goal for you? Cause like you said before, you may have been money driven maybe early on, but when did it become this now? Like you're, you're part of mass societies. You're really educating people. You're dropping gems, wisdom. Like when did, when did this become your higher, higher call? Cause after I mastered the, the, the fake game, mastered it too easy. Yeah. And I saw how I felt and what it did to our people. Once I became clear, yeah. I was out of here and it rhymed. So I did it. You feel what I'm saying? I Once you become conscious, you can't look the other way. Yeah. So why do you think so many people hold those people in high regard? Because they're scared. Celebrities. Because they're scared. Because they get hired by those people. They don't okay. do it on their own. They don't own it. They got to get hired. If you got to get hired, then you can get fired. I don't know how that feels at all. Never been fired. What does that mean? It's offense is the best form of defense. When I say this to you, what's, what comes to your mind? Um, Leo Cohen. Culture vulture. <laughs> straight. Just yeah. straight culture vulture. Nah, not straight culture vulture. <laughs> Boy, I mean, I just. <laughs> Do you feel like. I, I, listen, I what? challenge you all to a conversation publicly. Punk. He's thrown down the gauntlet. I like, bet he won't do it. Scared. I bet you won't do it. You're scared. What's your thoughts on academics? I don't think about them. But he's someone that calls out, quote unquote, culture vultures, gatekeepers now for the younger generation. I he's just someone that's kind of- I, I, I'm not disrespecting him, I'm just saying yeah. he's 51 years old. I don't be thinking about that type of shit. Meaning if he's doing it, that's great. But yeah. I, I, I don't have thoughts on other dudes. Unless right. I'm related to him. Do you feel like in 2022, artists can be blackballed in the you, music game? No one can be blackballed unless you want to be in the house that's not yours. No one can blackball you unless you let them. I blackball you, you don't blackball me. So you're saying if anyone, no one can be blackballed in the music industry. If you want to play at that game, the high game, if you want to be like- Not the high, high game. game. If you want to play the slave game, you'll get blackballed. Yeah, your master won't fucking let you in the house. Big fucking deal. Jesus. <laughs> I hear it. Let's move down here quickly before we head out and you cash out. I want to ask you about the commission. Ah. What is the commission? Talk to me, I'm interested. I like that, did you know about that? Yeah, I, do, I know about the Maurice. You know, again, you know, we like to form like Voltron and really help and fight. So what I did was put together people that are fighting when no one's really looking. Okay. So I got Senator Eddie Milton, who's yep. running for mayor in Gary, Indiana. Congressman Andre Carson. Yep. That's my main man in Indianapolis. 
and then Bishop Purnell to talk about, you know, proper education of religion. I have Dr. Chris to talk about health. Mm -hmm. That's what's killing us even before the bullet. But then we also have therapy, which is yep. important, unrecognized trauma. So we have Melody for the children and the foster kids, and we have Taj to speak the language of our culture because most people from our culture don't get therapy. So the study of people comes from people that are in our, from our culture, different trauma. So when we finally get therapy, it's the wrong therapy. Yeah. We have Do It All from the Lord's Underground. Okay. Do It All, first platinum artist to ever be elected as a public official. So we're seeing what the influence of hip hop is. So your intellect is it's bigger than it's politics. It's... it's about changing things. You can complain all you want unless you pass a law. It doesn't matter, it's illegal. Mm. And in school for some reason, they don't teach us how to lobby or pass laws, do they? Why you think? So I know. They want to keep us suppressed. I like that. So once we realize it, it's our job to fix it. Damn, man. Listen, we're doing big things. Oh, but one more thing. Mm. Web free. Oh, yeah. I like, a lot of people, I like all the questions you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot, a lot of people, uh, it's unfamiliar to them. Yeah. They don't get it. It's scary. It's new. People look at NF NFTs. People say, oh, is it a scam? What is it? Well, what's, what's Web3 to you? The Web3 is, you know, uncharted new money for us. A place a creative can make money with a middle, without a middleman if they understand it. Only 12% of the world knows about it. But, you know, it doesn't mean it's not going to take fire. I think everything is going to be in that way. Yeah. You know, most creatives can't get their vision done because they didn't got the bread and somebody pays for it, then it's not their creative vision anymore. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that's not the case. We need to keep these artists rich so they don't have to compromise. Okay. And then they can make the rules that behoove artists, not businessmen. But you know, I got work. It's a lot of gems, a lot of gems. Damn, what we're gonna let you do is get the kicks, cash out the cash register. And then cash go. out! My guy. My guy. Pleasure, man. Let's go. Nikki Sly! So, how much do I owe you? It's been a pleasure having you. And your total today will be... Dropping game and kick game, getting fresh while I do it. I respect the gangster. Pause. I feel super fresh to death. I got kicks. My girl got kicks. My kids got kicks. We all got kicks. Kick game.